Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So if you don't know me, I'm Rebecca and if you're already subscribed to my channel, welcome back. I am going to talk about the ways that we can help out with COVID-19 when we are not the frontliners. The main focus of this video will be more on blood donations and I'll be talking briefly about fund donations. So if you are interested, stay tuned. Yesterday, I went and donated my blood at Pusat Dara Negara, also known as National Blood Center. So the reason why I decided to donate my blood is because I heard that Malaysia is running low on blood stocks because right now blood donation campaigns can't be carried out as usual due to the MCO. However, you guys might be wondering what has blood donation got to do with COVID-19, you know? But the thing is, we have to remember that COVID-19 patients aren't the only patients right now in our country. There are many more patients that need blood, such as thalassemia patients, patients undergoing surgery, patients that are involved in major accidents. So there are still a lot of people that need blood. So I'll be giving you guys an example. For thalassemia patients, they are a group of people who need regular blood transfusion because they have abnormalities with their hemoglobin. In order to carry out normal function, they will have to have regular blood transfusion. So if the blood stocks are running low, how are they going to have their regular blood transfusion? This is very dangerous. So one packet of blood, you can save a few lives. I don't know how many lives, but you can save definitely a few lives. This is because our blood contains uh, multiple components. We have platelets, white blood cells, red blood cells, the plasma. Okay, so let's say if like those who are undergoing surgery, like they lost a lot of blood, then they would need the full blood. Okay, so if you're interested in donating blood, the first thing that you have to do is you have to go to Pusat Dara Negara's website and there will already be a form for you to fill up. So the first compartment of the form is the selection of which hospitals or center do you want to donate your blood at and you'll fill in your personal details and also check some of the criteria and once your form is approved you'll just have to print it out and bring it to your respective center so the first thing when i got to pusat darah negara i got my temperature check and i also had to do hand rub after that uh, there will be a personal consultation with a doctor there she will ask me about the criteria that are needed to be met and also some sensitive information like uh, my sexual history and stuff like that just to make sure that I'm qualified to donate my blood. So I won't be listing out all of the criteria that are needed to be met because honestly it depends on the person. The first one is you have to weigh 45 kilos and you have to have like five hours of sleep prior to the blood donation. Next, you must have already had a meal four hours prior to blood donation. Those are the three basic criteria that I remember, but I think the doctors will ask you like some other questions like whether you had any surgery within the last six months, whether you had any antibiotics for the past don't know how many months. So basically, the doctors will determine how much of blood you can donate. I got to donate 350 milliliters because the last time I donated was like three years back and the doctor was scared that my body was not used to it so she just set me off with 350 milliliters first so it really depends on your blood pressure and also your weight yeah that's what the doctor told me lah. so i mean if you can donate more the better right but honestly even though you're doing a good deed for someone you would want to protect yourself as well so if the doctor already says 350 milliliters, don't go bargaining with the doctor saying, Oh, I want to save my life, someone 450 milliliters. Please don't do that. Okay, so before taking my blood, they put some anesthetic at the site of injection. So the process is really easy and also it's for a very short while only. It's about 10 minutes. And after that, you're awarded with free meals and also supplements. So I got two kinds of supplements. I got folic acid and also ferrous fumarate. So basically, everyone there was wondering why are we given these supplements? And uh, we weren't given any explanations. I understand why most of the people over there, they were quite confused, like whether they should eat or 
you know, they shouldn't. So basically, why rhenic folic acid and so ferrous fumarate? So ferrous fumarate is an iron oral tablet. Iron is a component in our red blood cells. It's a part of hemoglobin. It ensures the normal functioning of uh, red blood cells. You can go and Google the functions of red blood cells. And then the next one would be folic acid. Folic acid is really important to synthesize, to repair DNAs. And um, this is a very crucial step for all of the cells. So in this case, we are mostly talking about red blood cells. But if there is a deficient in folic acid, it means that these processes can't take place properly and that would lead to an abnormal red blood cell. Okay, so the next thing that I'll be talking about is fund donations. Okay, so I compiled two organizations that are helping out with this COVID-19 situation and I got to know about this organization through Vivi Yusuf. Okay, so the first organization that I'll be talking about is Imarit. So basically, Imarit is working together with Fashion Valley to help out with this COVID-19 situation. So they are um, supplying medical supplies to, to hospitals that need it because right now there are overflowing of patients, not only COVID-19 patients, I'm sure there are still other patients as well. So they are giving out medical supplies to ensure that the hospital is always well equipped. And also another thing that they are doing is that they are giving out food and basic living supplies to the people who need it. So the second organization that I'll be talking about is MODA, Malaysian Official Designers Association. This is an organization where they are helping the hospitals to sew more PPE suits which I think it's very very important and I'm super grateful for them. So if you are wondering what exactly is PPE because you have never heard about the term before. So basically PPE is a personal protective equipment. So this these pictures are the example of PPE. So PPE consists of the whole set of like the gown, the helmet, the goggles, I think, and then the gloves, like full on protective suits. And these suits are normally disposable. So in this COVID-19 situation, we are really running out of them and our frontliners are not being protected because they have to use garbage plastics and stuff like that to you know to just get creative to make new ppes which doesn't work at all so that's why the malaysian designers are coming together to sew more ppes they have to hire people to sew it because you know one designer you want them to sew like so many you create create that is why they require funding so the third initiative that i'll be talking about is by arvin kumar i'm not sure whether this Thing is still ongoing but I'm sure you can always reach out to him and also ask him more about it. Anyways, um, he is blessing the needy with uh, some money just to make sure that they get through this tough period uh, well because most of them are not able to work because right now there is this MCO thing going on so a lot of people are suffering uh, financially. Okay guys, so that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. So thank you to all of the frontliners in the hospital, the police officers, the ones that are working in the restaurants, the ones who are involved in cleaning the hospitals and also thank you to all of you guys for staying at home. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!